Hello, welcome to my art studio. Today we're going to be talking about solvent-free oil painting. And the reason I'm excited about this is because I have always wanted to find a painting approach that didn't have microplastics like acrylic paint, but also didn't have the toxic solvents of oil paint. And for a lot of us, it feels like you kind of have to pick your poison. You either sort of risk harm to your lungs with oil paints and traditional solvents, or you have less harm to yourself and you have to contend with cleaning up microplastic water contamination. And so because I'm a full-time artist and because I was resolved to find a painting practice, that just was neither one of those things. I spent the last two and a half years-ish finding an approach that basically fit both of those needs. <laughs> and I've tried anything from water-soluble oils. I've tried the oil cleansing method. I've tried multiple solvent alternatives, something like a lavender spike oil. And I have landed on an approach that not only has great texture, not only dries relatively quickly, and still gives you full access to all of the wonderful traditional oil paints, but it's easy, it's straightforward, and I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to share this with you. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy this video. I also wanted to say that today's video is brought to you by my book, Modern Still Life, From Fruit Bowls to Disco Balls. This is a book that I worked really hard on last year, and I could not be more excited. It is a step-by-step -step painting book. You can use the approach that I taught you in this video to paint from that book. It not only has tips and step-by-step -step illustrations of how my paintings come together, how I layer them, but it also has lots of great advice on mediums and approaches to painting and how to be kind and forgiving to yourself as a way to become a better painter with a better practice. I put a lot of love into this book. I know you guys are going to enjoy it. So you can either click to pre-order it in the link below or if you're watching this after June 11th, you can go ahead and order it and I hope you enjoy the book. So I'm going to go ahead and put a timestamp here. If you are interested in just seeing what I use, if you are already sold and you want to see my particular mediums and solvents and how I use the setup to paint, I do a demo and you can click straight through to that to see how I painted this with my particular setup. Otherwise, I'm going to talk through kind of how I got here. The reason why I think it might be important to listen to this part is because recommending a medium and a solvent in a particular painting setup can be very personal. And I always think of this example, right? If you are going on YouTube and you wanna get a new skincare routine, you wouldn't go to just anyone and assume that the advice that they were giving would work for everyone because everyone's skin has different needs. Some people are oily, some people have rosacea, some people have dry skin. And even though there is consistent across the board good advice, you know, wash your face before you sleep, et cetera, there's a lot of particularities that's gonna depend on everyone's own particular needs out of their skincare routine and because of that it's important to know i started out an acrylic painter i love acrylic paint if it wasn't for the fact that it uses microplastics i would still be an acrylic painter so what that tells you guys is that i like my paints to be opaque layerable and dry really quickly if you are someone who you want your paint to be workable for days and days and days my final setup there's probably going to be things you can learn from that setup, but it may not be a perfect match for you. So I'm going to take you on my journey of how I got here and tell you about all the different setups that I used. And then at the end, I'm going to walk you through my current go-to solvent-free setup. So like I said in the beginning, I started out an acrylic painter. I still love acrylic paint. I teach in acrylic paint and I still have certain bodies of work that I have to use acrylic paint. But over the last decade or so, it's become more and more apparent how toxic microplastics are for the environment. And acrylic paints are basically pigment, water, and microplastic. And even though I do a really good job disposing of my paint water responsibly, you can't be perfect. And I knew that I wanted to phase out acrylic paints in my studies because I paint a lot. I paint every single day. I do a lot of work. And a lot of those are studies. They're just more processing through paint instead of an official finished piece of work. And so I challenged myself a couple of years ago, I'm going to phase out my studies to oil because they're less consequential and it's a way to sort of move towards a plastic-free practice, which is my end goal. And don't worry, I want to make a side note. I'm not shaming anyone. If you want to keep using acrylics, that's totally fine. I think my philosophy, and not everyone might agree with this, that's fine, is that the world is better with more people painting. So I don't want this video to be used to prevent someone from painting an acrylic or for someone to say, point to this video and say, hey, there is a way to paint without using acrylics and like tear someone else down. That goes directly against 
my mission. This video is intended to be helpful. Take what you need from it. So the funny thing about switching over to oils was that I actually hated them at first, like truly couldn't stand it. And I think my problem was that I was using a lot of slow dry mediums. So a brief kind of talk through on what oil painting entails. As opposed to acrylic paint, which is paint straight from the tube, water to clean brushes, canvas, you're good to go. You can use mediums, but you absolutely don't need it. And most people don't use mediums with acrylic. Oil has a couple other more complicated steps. You may have noticed that oil paints tend to be in smaller tubes, and that's because it's usually more concentrated pigments. It is suspended in oil, and there are some brands you can paint straight from the tube with. I'm thinking of Geneva Paints and M. Cram are both pretty liquidy oil paints. Paint companies like Gamblin and Michael Harding typically are more of a toothpaste texture, and because of that, you need to mix in a medium. Medium is basically an oil. Sometimes it's something like a liquid or a gal kid, a gel that you mix in to get your paint to be the texture that you want it. And typically that texture is going to be like a mayonnaise texture. It's going to depend on everyone. Again, that's where it gets personal. It's very difficult to paint with paint straight from the tube whenever you're working with oils. Not impossible, but hard. <laughs> Remember, oil and water don't mix. So you have to use something like a turpentine or a Gamsol to clean out the pigment from your brush. People also use solvent in the early steps of their painting, either as a wash or to thin out their medium and make it a lot thinner and dry quicker. Also, in something like a liquid or a gal kid gel, solvent is used in that, again, to speed up the dry time. So at this point, I was looking for a fast dry oil setup, and there's a lot of great resources out there. So I found this particular combination. I, of course, was still using my Gamsol, which is an odorless mineral spirit. Basically, it still has toxic fumes, but it's low odor, so it doesn't have that pungent smell like a turpentine, which is your classic sort of paint thinner mineral spirit that someone would use to clean their brushes. And then I also found Galkid gel. Again, I've heard liquid is a comparable medium. I used this to mix in with my paints. Not only did it create a better texture, but it also sped up dry time pretty dramatically. Usually it's about 24 hours. It's gonna depend on your climate. If you're somewhere very moist <laughs> and rainy, it might be closer to 48 hours, but down here in Texas, 24 hours, it really sped up the dry time. In addition to that, I also had someone suggest swapping out my white oil paint with a fast dry oil paint. This is from Windsor & Newton. It's a Alkid. Basically, there's something in the white that dramatically speeds up the dry time. So a combination of all of these things made it to where I would sit down and paint in one session. The paint wouldn't dry immediately like a acrylic paint would, but it was workable within one painting setting, which was like for me, you know, generously four hours. And then the next day it would be dry to touch and I could work on top of it. And that was like my miracle best case scenario oil setup. And I, at that moment, did fall in love with oil paints. I got it. I love the color. I love the texture. I love all the different kinds of paints you have access to. And like overnight, <laughs> I started to understand why people liked oil paint. So this is what I'm going to call my honeymoon period. And I think it's this fast dry white that actually does have a pretty strong odor to it that started making me feel dizzy and lightheaded after painting. And don't worry, I had, you know, a window open. I was trying to be responsible with that. I painted with gloves and I started doing research into what was so harmful about the fumes from solvent that I went down a rabbit hole. And there are a lot of risks, you know, especially again, same problem I had with the acrylic paints when you paint as much as I do. So I thought while I'm still flexible and not so stuck in my ways with my medium, even though I found a pretty amazing setup, I was, I challenged myself to keep figuring it out and try to move away from solvents while still enjoying oil paints. This brings me to the next thing I did, which was phase out solvent. So one of the first things I found was Gamblin has a line of solvent free. They have a solvent free gel, which is their counter to the gal kid gel it has everything that this has in it minus the solvent so it has like a resin in it and it does speed up dry time not as much maybe closer to two days until this becomes dried to the touch and the texture isn't quite as nice it's not a huge difference if you're an artist like me and you can be a little bit pedantic over things it's very similar it would be hard to sell to someone who's never painted that they're different but it is a minor difference, not only in a slightly slower dry time, it takes about 48 hours to become dry to the touch, again, climate dependent. And then it's also just ever so slightly 
gummier. And for some people, I know that's going to be a deal breaker. I consider myself pretty sensitive to texture and it took me maybe a week or two to kind of get over. And now I don't notice it at all. But, you know, if, if texture is a deal breaker for you, maybe this won't work. <laughs> I will say I've recommended this to a ton of people. And I know many artists who like finding this help them to be able to paint with oil again. So take that for what you will. Now, the bigger change whenever I phased out solvent was how do I clean my brushes and how do I do that thin wash in layer? Well, to answer the first question, how you swap out your solvent is you swap it out for an oil. I want to be careful because when you look online, there's a lot of people who suggest that you can use a cooking oil because you're just using the oil to clean your brushes, right? However, the oil never completely leaves the brushes and not only are cooking oils lower grade, but if you use something like even like a mineral oil, which I've seen suggested on forums, the mineral oil never completely cures. Oils that are artist grades will eventually cure and ideally they'll cure lighter than instead of yellowy and dark. So because of that, there's a lot of really bad advice on the internet. And I do recommend making sure that you go with a nicer oil and don't fall into that trap. If having your oil paints last for a long time or be archival is something that's important to you, I definitely would encourage going down the artist grade oil route. That being said, the biggest drawback to me was how cumbersome and difficult and how many extra steps it takes to clean your brushes. Now, there are approaches you can use where within a painting setting, you can pour this into a cup with like an agitator at the bottom and it can keep your brushes from drying out. It can cleanse them a little bit. And then at the end of your painting session, you can go sit on your porch and use a, a true solvent to clean your brushes fully. That is an option. You don't have to commit fully, right? You don't have to completely go solvent free to lower your risk if you're worried about fumes. Just putting that out there. For me, though, it was always hard to use. Uh, one of the issues I had was that because you couldn't fully get the oil out using oil, or at least it was hard to within a painting setting, I would do something like I would have a white in a paintbrush that I couldn't fully get out, titanium white. And if you know that pigment, it's like a, it's, it's a bull. It really sticks to your brushes. And I would go in and try to paint a shadow. And because there was a little bit of white left in that brush that I had cleansed in oil, it would show up and, and ruin my shadows. So I had to start having a process where I had my darks and my lights, and it just added a bunch of different steps. And because I had acrylics in my studio also, I found myself not using my oils, which was kind of going against my mission to phase out acrylics, especially with studies. I'll just briefly say, if you don't mind slower dry time and you're a slower painter who doesn't go through as many brushes, it might work for you. And I would also recommend looking on YouTube and finding other people who love the oil cleansing method because they're going to have a lot of really great tips because that's the thing. You just kind of have to learn how to deal with a slightly slower setup. I tried it for a long time and I, I can still use it if I need to. It's not the worst scenario, but it's not my favorite. And so I just kept pushing for another solution. The next thing that I tried at this point was water soluble oils. I think by this point, I was talking on my social media about my quest for painting solvent-free. And the thing about water-soluble oil paints is that I find it to be very polarizing. Some people love it and swear by it, and they're the biggest ambassadors for it. And other people can't even look at them. <laughs> I find myself to be kind of in the middle. So the thing about water-soluble oil paints is that the oil in the paint, again, it's the thing that's inside of the paint tube, has been structurally changed to where it is water soluble. It's no longer hydrophobic, which means that you can have the best of acrylic and the best of oil in theory. So you have this great oil paint that feels like an oil paint and dries slower, and yet you can take your brush and you can clean it in water. However, there's a couple of big hangups with it. One, there's the glaring issue of now you have to invest in an entirely new set of paints, right? You can't use your traditional oils with it, which a lot of people, they want to paint with oils because they want all the range. They want the Michael Hardings and the M. Grahams and the Gamblins. And so that's already a big knock against it. Plus, it's an investment. To try it out, you have to buy like, you know, conservatively maybe four or five paints plus a medium. And that for a lot of people is a huge commitment. <laughs> and so for that reason, I wouldn't recommend it unless I was like positive that everyone would like it. And not everyone does. The big drawback is the texture. <laughs> so it dries quicker and they have things like quick dry liquid that I actually really like. I will mix my quick dry liquid in with water and use that as a medium. 
and I can use my water soluble oils kind of like acrylics. They will dry within 20 minutes or so. The one thing though is that the texture is kind of like painting with like pigment and honey. Like it has like a sticky texture to it. And I find that the water soluble paints end up in this like no man's land of paint drying. So like it's like this with acrylic, it's like this with oil. But like say for example, you're painting with acrylic, you have it where it's wet and you can mix wet on wet and blend beautifully. And then once it's completely dry, you can layer on top because it's nice and opaque. But you have this like, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minute window of time where it's gummy and it doesn't blend. It just kind of drags. And as an acrylic painter, I just knew to let things dry <laughs> during that period. And with oil, I just know to give things a day or two to dry so I don't end up in that gummy period. It feels like with water-soluble oil paints, it lives in that gummy period forever. <laughs> like it dries quickly enough within a session that you think, okay, well, I'll just wait an hour and it'll be dry enough to paint on top of, but it's still sticky. It's for that reason I can't recommend wholeheartedly trying water-soluble oil paints but if you, if you feel interested in it, if the gummy texture isn't going to deter you, if you feel like you can work with it, you know, I would definitely recommend trying the better quality brands. One of the things that a lot of people in my comment section brought up as a reason that they were hesitant to try water-soluble oils is the archival quality or like how long will the pigments last. There is some question around that, but I will say Holbein reached out to me and someone on their sales team said basically that they have tested them. I trust Holbein as a brand. Generally, they're really a good quality company. They produce really good pigments. And so I'm inclined to believe them that they've done testing on it. But again, that's just up to you. I still will use mine. I like to use my water soluble paints as an underpainting. And then I can paint with my traditional paints on top of it. You know, that's how I use it now. I'm happy with them. I probably won't go purchase a lot more, but I'll use the rest of them. And I will say it is really cool to like paint with oil and then clean in water. Like it's just mind blowing. So because of this, I went back to my traditional oils and now I gave up the oil cleansing method. I just said, that's not for me. I did find the solvent free gel and I was just thinking if I can just find an alternative to the Gamsol or the um, solvent that I think I have a pretty decent setup. So because of that, I started trying out things like lavender spike oil and other solvent alternatives on the market and the problem with the spike oil and I think it was a citrus oil I also tried was that while they were marketed as solvent free their odor was really pungent I didn't think I was that sensitive to smell until I went on this adventure apparently I am <laughs> anyways I found that the lavender smell was overpowering it made my studio smell like lavender I have heard from people that that is a pro that they like that about it and so I would just say if you're sensitive to smell keep trying different solvents this ended up landing me where I found a company called Natural Earth Paints, and I found a product called EcoSolve. You know, full disclosure, I didn't try every single alternative solvent on the market. I just kept trying them until I found something that worked. So I think I tried like four or five different kinds before I tried EcoSolve. And most of the time, the issue was that it wasn't effective. It didn't clean out my paints well enough or that the smell was too strong. By the time I found EcoSolve, yeah, it has basically no smell. If you get really close to it, it kind of smells fruity is like kind of fruity it's not an offensive smell at all and it does a really good job cleaning out the paints it basically in a lot of ways works just like a gamsol and so for me that was the combo i will say you know disclaimer the things that are not identical about ecosolves compared to something like let's just say gamsol gamsol feels like it's like very top of the line most people are familiar with it but the differences are it doesn't dry quite as quickly as the gamsol when you're using it as a wash in the beginning, basically where you take a little bit of oil paint and then on your palette where you mix in a brush full of solvent. If you use that as like a primer whenever you're using Gamsol, it dries pretty much instantly. And if you use something like an EcoSolve, it could take 10, 15, 20 minutes to dry. And that's something to be aware of. The other thing is that I found that EcoSolve eats plastic. <laughs> you have to be really careful. Two examples of this are I have some paint brushes that have like a plastic coating on the wood handle. And if I leave my brushes in the EcoSol for any length of time, maybe again that 10, 15 minute mark, it will start to melt my plastic. <laughs> and so you do be really careful. I am not in the habit of leaving my brushes in my EcoSol. I kind of clean and wipe and go. So this hasn't been a huge problem for me. It's just, I just have to remember, definitely don't leave them in there. The other thing is I remember I had a rag that had some EcoSol on it. And I put it in a bag with my plastic 
rulers, like my little clear cheapy plastic rulers, and it melted the rulers a little bit. So you have to be careful. I don't feel like Gamsol does that. <laughs> Maybe turpentine does, but I've never had that happen with Gamsol. And so that's another thing to be aware of. You just have to clean it up and be careful. And I will also say that it is also flammable and you have to, same thing with Gamsol, you have to be really careful and make sure you lay your rags dry flat after you're done using them. Same with your oily rags because you do have the risk of spontaneous combustion. EcoSol is flammable and whenever oil paint cures, it heats up. And so you can't just have oily EcoSol rags together in a ball. You do run the risk of having fire issues. So you have a couple of options. You can lay your rags flat, like I said, or you can get a metal canister designed for putting flammable things in and just keep an eye on it. So definitely look into fire safety, but that's kind of across the board with all of these methods because anytime you use oil or solvent, or especially the combination of oil and solvent, you have to be careful of the fire danger. There's kind of just no getting away from that. All right, let's jump into the solvent-free setup. First, I'm gonna start by explaining everything that I have laid out in front of you. And let's just start with my Hero products. So in the top right-hand corner in the little stainless steel canister, I have the EcoSolve. I'm using it pretty much one-to-one -one like a solvent. I'm using it to clean my brushes. I also use it as my ground layer. As you can see, I have my surface primed here with like this nice taupey <laughs> grayish color and actually what I'm using is in the process of attempting to clarify um, which is an important point because one of the drawbacks of EcoSolve is it doesn't pure, like clarify just quite so purely like a Gamsol or a turpentine clarify just means all of the pigment perfectly settles to the bottom and you're left at the top layer with like a pure basically good as new um, solvent it does tinge it ever so slightly I will say just like with oil cleansing, just like with acrylic water, you let it settle and you can kind of reuse the top layer over and over and over. I've never needed my solvent to be perfectly clarifiable, if that's the right word. So it never put too much of an issue for my own personal setup, but if that's something that's part of your practice, I think it's good to know. Um, but basically, this all the sediment that will settle to the bottom during that process where I'm reusing the EcoSolve, I actually take that and I prime my gessoed panels with that taupey gray sediment color. And then I have like kind of a free built-in base color. If you are wanting to have like a really circular practice where you're reusing as much as you can, then it's a great tip. I use it and it works just great. Okay, moving on to the other things here, the other parts of my setup. Across the bottom on my glass panel, I have um, my paints, of course, but I also have my Gamblin solvent-free gel, which of course, like I said earlier, is a version of uh, like a liquid from Winsor & Newton or a Galkid gel from Gamblin. It's that sort of fast dry gel uh, resin sort of texture. It comes out of the tube pretty thick. However, if you've ever used a liquid or a Galkid, you know that very quickly it sort of liquefies down. <laughs> and then it, it really feels, I, I hesitate to even compare it to an oil. It's like thick-ish like a stand oil, but it's liquidier, if that makes any sense. It's just a viscosity you have to try out for yourself. And then I want to touch back on the paints because that's a really important part of this when I over the years when I've been workshopping this strategy and talking to other artists about how they paint solvent free and have they been curious about it I had a lot of people mention like I've considered other things switching to acrylic switching to wash switching to water soluble oils however the idea of parting from these traditional oil paints that like you know, over the years, artists become very attached to certain pigments. I remember learning from a painter I look up to that she spent years looking for the perfect hot pink and, you know, and she found the one color from the one brand and she became really attached to it. So I know painters can become really attached to certain pigments from certain companies. And so a real highlight here is something that's actually not special to the setup. It's just the fact that you can use all of your traditional oil paints with this particular setup. I also want to bring up the palette knife. Now, not to say that this is exclusive to this setup, but I did want to mention that one thing that can be really helpful is mixing out little piles of paint that have the Gamblin Solvent Free Gel mixed in with it. So if you're an oil painter and you've worked with a liquid or a gal kid, you probably don't need to hear this, but if you're converting over from acrylics to this particular approach, one of the things that can be really hard is that most oil paints straight from the tube are really thick. They're almost like toothpaste-like in texture. And by using the Galkid, the solvent-free Galkid um, alternative, solvent-free gel, mixed in with your paints, 
And in this case, you can see I pre-mix the colors to match my painting. So I have a couple different colors for the sand, a couple for the sky, a couple for the ocean and the rocks. And so that's a pretty normal practice. That's a stylistic choice. But I mixed it in with a good amount of the, um, you know, about maybe 20, 15, 20% of the Gamblin solvent free gel. <laughs> and it created a texture that was very similar to a heavy body acrylic paint, which is for me personally, kind of my ideal texture. And I find that mixing with the palette knife, as opposed to trying to mix it all with your brush, not only makes you not have to clean your brushes quite so vigorously and puts less pressure on your brushes, but it um, saves paint and it makes this whole process a lot smoother, both literally literally and metaphorically. I also, during this whole process, wanted to highlight the people that I was able to interview for this episode in, in my research. So a few months back, I was able to talk to Mary from Gamblin. She's a representative and we talked all about her solvent-free line. And I also have a podcast episode with her where we go in depth and talk about not only the solvent-free products, but painting and best practices and safety and all the wonderful thing that Gamblin is doing to have a very eco-friendly, friendly and safe while maintaining their archival quality to their business and they've always been a great resource for if you're wanting to look up safety about products their website is full of great information so I'm going to link that here. I was also able to talk to Leah Feining of Natural Earth Paints. She is the founder and the owner <laughs> of Natural Earth Paints and that is a cool company. She is really dedicated to making sure that all of her products across the board um, that she sells are both environmentally friendly and also very safe for humans to use. She makes things like face paints and all kinds of amazing products. Getting to talk with her and interview her about her mission statement was so incredibly exciting and motivating and it just showed me how much room there is to play no matter if you stick to one particular setup or you play around with different strategies if you want to have a more sustainable eco-friendly safer oil painting practice I will also say that she just came out with a line of plastic free acrylics that I am so excited to try if that sounds interesting to you you guys just let me know in the comments below but hopefully that was a helpful demonstration And the final step of painting, of course, is varnishing. Now, you don't actually need to varnish. Like, it's not compulsory, <laughs> but I do recommend it for me. I like to varnish because it offers an extra layer of protection. It's easier to clean. And then also, I really like the look of a satin varnish, making the different paints a little more homogenous. Some paints dry really matte. Some paints dry really glossy. And being able to sort of control the finish is nice. And so because of that, I love a good satin varnish. There are two varnishes that I've tried and really enjoy using. One of them is Gambar. I've used that for a long time. Obviously, this downside about it is that it does have a solvent in it. That's why it dries so quickly. The one solution I'm going to offer here, though, is that you can basically take your varnishing setup outside. I believe in the podcast where I talked to a Gamblin rep, we talked about taking a box and putting it on top of your newly varnished painting to keep debris from falling into it carving some holes on the side so that there's still airflow. And that's a great solution. If you have a back patio, if you have a backyard, if you have a place with lots of great ventilation, you can put it in there, leave it for 24, 48 hours, and then you're not having to expose yourself actively to solvent. That is an option. Also, Gambar has different finishes, matte, satin, gloss. And so there's options. That's why I'm wanting to bring it up in this video. But of course, I advertised a completely solvent-free oil setup. And so because of that, Luckily, Natural Earth Paints, which is, again, a great company, has something called Natural Varnish that does not have solvent in it. It does have a strong odor, and so far, I believe they only have a gloss finish. So far, maybe they'll come out with different ones, which is not my preferred varnish, but it is a great varnish. It dries really quick. I do use it. If I don't have a painting that's like a nocturne where I, do, I really don't want gloss, other paintings, it works great, and I use it all the time. It doesn't have solvent. You can use it in your studio, but I, because of the smell and because I guess I'm sensitive to smell, will varnish it outside and put the box on it. And that's kind of how that works for me. Hopefully that was helpful. There's a lot of information in this video. And again, I didn't cover every single aspect of any kind of solvent-free practice. It's just kind of like my journey, what works for me. I'm really proud of this setup. I've recommended it to a lot of people over the last like six, eight, 10 months. And a lot of people have said that they really enjoy this particular setup. So I wanted to share it with you guys. 
Let me know if you have any questions and if there's anything else pertaining to mediums that you want me to cover. I didn't think that this would be an area that I enjoy talking about. I always kind of just like to get straight into the painting, but I've really enjoyed this process and learning more about sort of what goes into paints and mediums and varnishes. And I just really enjoy sharing with you guys. So with that, take care. Thanks for watching and happy creating. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification to get more notifications about my podcast and all the videos I create here on YouTube.